The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to the National Fair Tax Monthly Webinar. I'm your host, Mark Maneri. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for taking time out of your, your busy life and your evening to join us and get educated and engage and really determine if if you're new to the fair tax and i know there's some of us on the line that are new or at least that i've seen that are new to the webinar really determine if what you learn about tonight aligns for you and you see see it as a real benefit for yourself for your community for this country and and if the answer to that question is yes then we will we will look to have you in action. <clears throat> so, yeah, thank you for spending your time with us this evening for just about an hour. Uh, I want to acknowledge that uh, some of my colleagues were at CPAC, and there'll be likely time for uh, some of those individuals to speak on the line tonight if they wish to do so and share their experience there and um, yeah what they see so tonight for those of you who are just joining us for the very first time a couple of things to know is uh, you could communicate with us and we encourage and invite that so at the bottom of your control panel is a place where you can write in questions uh, please do that the goal for tonight is, as it always is, is to educate um, and to answer as many questions as we have so you leave informed and at a place where you have enough intel, enough information where you could determine if this is something that you really want to get behind. So you can write in some questions so we would invite that and the way that we structure our evening is for the next 20 minutes or so, I'll give a, a general overview of the main merits of the fair tax legislation. Then we'll pause for any questions. We'll spend five or 10 minutes discussing our special topic, which tonight is taking a look at how one would go about creating a meeting, a face-to-face -face meeting with their congressperson. And then we'll spend the rest of the time, any time that we have left, answering questions. So that's it. I am going to remind myself to hit record here. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So, um, yeah, one of the things that I start out in my presentations talking about is that the fair tax legislation is it's simple, it's fair, and it's transparent. And this is such a an extraordinary graphic. We've got a tax code that continues to be piled upon. It's over seventy five thousand pages. Um, no two individuals, even. Like what I mean by that is like elite uh, CPAs or attorneys that know the tax law. There's no two of them that could file a tax return like and get to the same answer. Like it's just it's just not possible with this volume of edits over time and over and over and over again. And you know, our country is just like such an amazing place in the world and a leader in so many ways. And yet in the in the area of its tax structure, it's like as confusing as it gets. So there's such an opportunity to evolve and be a leader and the fair tax legislation would do that. So there's seven key factors of drag that our current tax code exudes and we're going to identify those and use those as um, a rudder to move through our presentation tonight and systematically show you how the fair tax eliminates all of them so totally convoluted we said that 
we, we completely inspire the wrong behavior. So if you think about that, the more money you make, the more the government takes. And in, you know, what we know to be true is that at some point for business owners, uh, there becomes a point of diminishing returns where uh, more effort and more creativity and more ingenuity and more innovation to produce more, to create more revenue and profit and wealth doesn't make sense anymore. And the tax code uh, gets in the way of that ingenuity and that productivity and performance. So we got to change that. Uh, complete lack of transparency. Nobody knows what's happening when Congress are pulling levers and manipulating the tax code. Incredibly inefficient, impedes privacy. Uh, winners and losers. We'll talk all about these. We'll dive into them. And, you know, given the time of year that it is, like, the, much to my chagrin and maybe many of you on the line, absolutely time intensive, labor intensive. And my gosh, if I could have back all the time I've put in to in, in the work I've done for my taxes, even outsourcing my taxes to a uh, a really respectable CPA and tax firm, it's like, it's just, uh, wow, if I could have that time back, there'd be so much more I could do with it. All right, so let's look at how the, so this is what we've got. We have got a tax system that has evolved um, and, and really, let's just say, spun out of control and has um, occur and occurs in a way where uh, it just puts so much drag on our economy. And if, if we could eliminate all these things, man, we would not only generate more money for the government um, and, and, and absolutely pour rocket fuel on the economy for everybody, individuals and cit or citizens and businesses, um, we would just we would we would have we would have something that would solve more problems than uh, just an inefficient tax code. So more on that later. Okay, so legislation, the Fair Tax Plan, it's legislation that exists right now. HR twenty five in the House, S eighteen in the Senate. It's been reintroduced every. I can't remember how often it gets reintroduced now that I think about it, but it's been around for a while and, you know, we stay at it and we have gained some momentum. We've lost some momentum and we gain some momentum back and we do this webinar every month to gain more momentum and momentum occurs at the grassroots level. All of you people tuning in and being in action. So, this is great. Fair tax. 131 pages, double spaced. Yeah, so put that on a scale against 75,000 plus pages. Like that, when you put that into perspective, that's a bit mind blowing. So, um, I mean, there's so much I could say about that, but like simple sometimes is such a better fix when you've got a complex situation. So the fair tax supports growth. <clears throat> so it's a consumption tax, not an income tax. And that's such a key distinction. And I'm looking at who's on the line tonight. And I know we've got some uh, regulars. And we thank you and appreciate you for coming back and supporting us. And there's some new people. And for the new people that are here, um, really important distinction. Because we get a lot of questions asked, well, what about a flat tax? Well, okay, it's flat tax. Yeah, well, guess what? It's still an income tax. You know, it, you know, it doesn't actually solve a whole lot. <clears throat> so the fair tax is a consumption tax, and you only pay tax on what you spend, not on what you earn. Key point. And it eliminates all federal taxes with sister legislation that will repeal the 16th Amendment. So... Personal and corporate income taxes, gone. Um, the alternative minimum tax, gone. The estate tax, gone. 
capital gains taxes gone. Uh, the payroll taxes uh, with Medicare and Social Security gone. Right. And there's a, a handful of others that I'm forgetting right now. But we can replace all of those with a a revenue generating tax platform that is absolutely uh, progressive and better for all citizens, regardless of economic standing, which we'll talk about later and every business um, and put more money in the federal government coffers as a result of our rocket fueled economy. So let's talk about this idea of transparency. So I said earlier, like we don't know what happens right now. Congress manipulates the tax code. They're lobbied hard to do so. And they do so. And with the fair tax, it's like completely transparent. You know, there's no loophole. So there's only one tax. It's a consumption tax on new retail goods and services. So what that means is used goods are um, untaxed and business to business transactions are not taxed. Let me go back to that. So the fair tax rate is 23% and it's inclusive. And what that means is when you go to the store, yeah, so here's a, here's a couple of examples that could be useful for you. You go to the mall, you go to the store, you walk in, you buy a pair of jeans, they're a hundred bucks, you take them to the cash register, you check out, you pay a hundred bucks. So the fair tax, the national retail sales tax, 23% is built in. And when you get your receipt, talk about transparency, it says it will tell you that the jeans were $77 and $23 went to the federal government for the national retail sales tax. Really clean, really clear, really simple. Now, as it relates to um, where the tax is levied, new retail goods and services, uh, a great example that I like to use is a home builder. So home builder is a business, and they build homes and sell them at the retail level to the consumer. Well, when they per there's a lot of inputs that they have to purchase to build that home. And they purchase from other businesses to get all of their supplies. And when they purchase those, those purchases are not, the fair tax is not levied. Now, when they go and they sell that home, for the very first time, it's considered a new good. And the fair tax is levied, and again, it's inclusive. So, for number sake, simplicity purposes, if the home is a hundred grand, the consumer pays a hundred grand, and twenty three thousand of that would the 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 business would collect all of it, and they'd set aside twenty three percent, or in this case, twenty three thousand, and every month they would remit twenty three percent of their gross receipts uh, to their state sales tax bureau. Who would then set it on to the Department of the Treasury. That's it. Okay, <clears throat> now, and then when that homeowner lives in that home for however long they do, and then they resell it to, to another homeowner, it's, it's considered a used good. And the fair tax is not levied. So new goods and services and only at the retail level. Great. Okay, so let's look at some of the key benefits on business and trade and our economy. So one, and I love this, this statistic is, is pretty extraordinary. So we got roughly $120 trillion in global, not just from the U.S., but global personal and corporate assets in the form of stocks, bonds, and mostly cash that is sitting in um, offshore banking centers. And when the fair tax gets implemented, because personal and corporate income taxes would go away and capital gains taxes would go away, it is estimated that as much as a trillion dollars would organically flow back into our economy in the first year because business owners and wealthy individuals will do with it what 
they know how to do best with it. They would reinvest it in their businesses and expand without having the penalty of being burdened by having to have more taxes collected on their income by the federal government. Makes absolute sense. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, in this, the U.S. becomes a corporate headquarter haven. So it means huge jobs. So think about it. There's a, <clears throat> there's a term that uh, is, is really in the news, it continues to be in the news, called inversion, where American corporations relocate their international headquarters to a more tax-friendly country. Ireland's a big a big location for that. In fact, the top 10 largest tech companies in the world all have inverted and moved their international headquarters to Ireland because they save like literally hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. Yeah. So <clears throat> if we go to 0%, you better believe companies across the world are going to flock here. Like there's just, you know, it's why it's happening right now. So that happens, which means there is going to be a, a huge need for infrastructure built, tons of new jobs, uh, buildings ex built, staff needed, expansion to businesses, and like, you know, people making more money than they've ever made. Like really. The, and, and look, the average American's income will go up by 29%. And the reason why is because there's no more gross pay net pay, right? Like right now, if a, if a, if a W-2 employee grosses five grand in income every month, they take home, like depending on their dependencies they claim and all that, somewhere in the neighborhood of 38, 3,900 bucks, something like that. Yeah, well, under the fair tax, the the um, the collection of taxes in advance on uh, the the withholdings on your paycheck they go away because there is no FICA and Medicare and Social Security and income tax withholdings. So you have a five grand salary. You walk you walk out the door that month with five grand. So now put that into perspective. During the housing crisis, it was estimated that if if Americans had, if if the the average American inside the housing crisis that lost their home had an additional five to seven hundred dollars a month, they would have been able to sustain the uh, the 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 adjustment on their interest rate or their mortgage or whatever else impacted them and been able to stay in their home. That that's not a small thing. Yeah. So now we've the other thing we've got here is an underground economy. Massive, two trillion bucks, and you know, anytime anybody playing in this underworld goes to the store and buys a pair of jeans, a sports car, a house, a groceries, you know, they pay their fair share. So we broaden the base, and my gosh, that makes so much sense. Now, the fair tax was created by a litany of many of the most brilliant PhD economists in the country. And it was, it was created in such a way that it would be revenue neutral for the government in the first year, meaning will, the government will collect the same amount of money it collects right now under the current tax system, and then as the economy grows, it'll collect more. Okay, so super efficient and simple to collect. So... The states will likely connect from businesses because 45 of them currently have the infrastructure already in place to collect a state sales tax. So we'll leverage that infrastructure and create state sales tax bureaus. And think about this. Look at the second bullet point. We get 80% more efficient right off the bat. I love that step. Like that's just smart. Right, collect from roughly 20 million businesses in, instead of 120 million households. You know, think about the efficiency in that. 
And it's real simple. One form to fill out. What are your gross revenues times 23%? Send that off to the federal government or your state sales tax bureau, excuse me. Um, like that's it. And you and I on the phone as uh, consumers, as citizens, yeah, like it's cliche, at least it is in this world because we've said it so many times, but my gosh, is it true? April 15th becomes another beautiful spring day. I love that. Talk about inefficiency. IRS costs $13 billion to operate. They only collect three quarters of what they should. And sister legislation with the fair tax would eliminate the IRS. All right, so privacy protected and efficient. So you pay your taxes when you make purchases. No filling out detailed income tax forms. And like I said, April 15th, man, you're just walking in the park. <clears throat> All right, so here's a really important point about the fair tax. Fairness. Remember, simple, fair, and transparent. So there's a key measure baked into this legislation called the prebate, which ensures that no one pays federal taxes up to the poverty level. So allow me to explain this through a graph here. <clears throat> All right, move your eyeballs to the right side of the screen. And let's say that you're a two adult household and you've got two kids, so move down to the green line here. And the annual consumption allowance. So what this is, is uh, it's, a, it's a statistic based on a lot of research done by the Department of Health and Human Services in the federal government that suggests uh, it, that there's poverty level spending thresholds based on the size of your family. So in other words, two adults, two kids, if you spend 32 grand, 480 bucks a year, you're spending at the poverty level, right? You're basically covering your basic necessities of life, food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and medical. Okay, so inside this model, inside this uh, component of the fair tax, the if you were to take, so remember, there's no loopholes, right? You, you pay the fair tax at the retail level in all cases with the exception of education. And so if you spend $32,480, and you multiply that times the fair tax rate of 23%, over the course of a year, you will have contributed $7,470 in federal tax. Divide that by 12 for 12 months of the year, and the prebate will direct deposit into your bank account $623 at the beginning of each month reimbursing you in advance for the fair tax you'll pay up to the poverty level spending limit. So this occurs for me as really, really smart and really important because there's a lot of, well, <clears throat> let me say it this way. The fair tax, so congressmen and women who support the fair tax become an easy target. Because their opponent can simply say, yeah, my opponent on the other side wants to raise taxes by 23%. You know, they leave everything else out. And that's really going to hurt lower income class Americans. No, no, the fair tax is going to make a huge difference for lower income class Americans. Like you could save money on, on buying used goods. You get uh, an additional income stream through the prebate every month. You will have a huge increase in your take-home pay due to the elimination of uh, federal tax withholdings. And there will be uh, more happening in the economy. There will be more opportunity than ever before. It is going to serve everyone. 
So uh, really important to understand the fair tax impact on prices. So let's look at this. All right. So right now, you got business income taxes passed off to the consumer. Like, for real, businesses don't pay taxes. I mean, they, they basically look at their projection for the year, and they look at their past performance in the years past. They see how much they had to pay in taxes corporately, and they just factor that into their profit and loss model as a line item expense and they adjust the prices on their offerings accordingly to account for that line item expense along with the cost to comply to the federal tax code. So right now as consumers, we pay personal income taxes and we pay business income taxes. And we call that the embedded tax which is equal to approximately 22% in all retail goods. So if you think about it, the, the embedded tax will come out and the fair tax of 23% will go in. And while it's not a complete wash, um, it would be false to think that prices are going to go up by 23%. No, they'll likely go up 10 to maybe 12 or 14 percent in the first year and then as competition uh, gets heavier people will try to businesses will grab more market share by lowering their prices and within a few years you'll have the fair tax and you'll have prices that were at the same level before the fair tax got implemented it will be the best of both worlds all right we have systematically demonstrated how the fair tax eliminates the seven uh, key components of drag on our, in our current tax system and on our economy. It makes sense for everyone. So who wouldn't want it? Yeah, on, only people where the current tax system benefits them. 50% of lobbyists are tax lobbyists. They get really, um, you know, there's not as much of a need for them if they don't need to lobby the Congress to manipulate the tax code. Politicians who get to operate in shroud by pulling levers and manipulating the tax code without us knowing about it. Um, you know, of course, some IRS workers. So it's like, man, anybody who's against the fair tax like the only way that's realistic, if they truly understood the legislation, are operating out of self-interest. Like that's really it. And you know, it's it tends to be it it predominantly has become supported by Republicans, fiscally conservative uh, politicians. But my gosh, Democrats are missing a huge opportunity. Like if you talk about a piece of legislation that's for the people, like for the average Joe, like this is it. Nothing has ever come close to this. All right. So you've got some information and um, yeah, we welcome your questions here and we're going to take them in a moment. Um, and we'll take some questions before we get to our special topic, uh, meeting your congressperson. All right, so we've got some comments and some more comments and a couple of questions. So, um, yeah, thanks everybody for contributing. Yeah, so I'll read some of these comments. So tax cuts are temporary. The fair tax is forever. Love that. Uh, $13 billion can be used to pay down our national debt. Yep, no, I <laughs> love that. Uh, HR 25 provides IRS is unfunded at the end of three years. Not in sister legislation. Okay, great. This is from Randy who's correcting me. I appreciate this. So here is, I, I said there's sister legislation that would repeal the IRS. And the, the accuracy in that is this. HR 25 
uh, will phase out of administration of repealed federal taxes, appropriations for any expenses of the Internal Revenue Service, including processing returns for years prior to the repeal of the taxes uh, by Title I of this Act, revenue accounting, management, transfer of payroll and wage, etc., cetera, uh, shall not be authorized. So that's like literally how it's written. Yeah, thank you, Randy. Appreciate that. Okay, great. Yeah, Democrats don't raise, the, don't want the fair tax because it doesn't raise taxes. Republicans don't want the fair tax because it takes away their corporate get giveaways. That's uh, that's likely a fair comment, Josh. Thank you. All right. So uh, we have a couple questions about CPAC, and as I'm as I sit here, I recognize that we have um, one of our team members, Ron Malero, if my memory serves me, is performing uh, his Fairtax Power Radio from CPAC. And um, Ron, I am going to do something I don't normally do, but I have you unmuted. Can you hear me? Can you speak up? Yep, I can hear you fine. Yeah, great. Um, what, what would you tell us about CPAC? Um, this has been an interesting experience. Uh, first off, the technical part. Uh, this is all new to us. We're uh, broadcasting on Fairtax Power Radio on Spreaker. It's like speaker with an R. Spreaker.com. That's our main platform. Hey, Ron, uh, getting the real quick, tell yes. people who might not know what CPAC is. Oh, okay. That's the Conservative Political Action Convention. It's one of the biggest political events uh, conventions in the country each year. Um, the vice president was there today giving uh, his speech and the president is supposed to show up tomorrow. So there's there's a lot of people there, a lot of candidates and a lot of groups uh, were of course with the exhibitors. So it's a pretty busy place and it's also where we are a very noisy place, which is uh, contributing to some of our, our technical learning, uh, trying to get the microphones right, because at the same time that we're recording Fairtax Power Radio with Bob and I, and we're interviewing uh, various people, a lot of students there and so forth, uh, we're also, it would simultaneously, uh, when we do interviews, we're doing Facebook Live, and we got a separate microphone for that, so we're asking people to hang on to two microphones, it's getting interesting. But the other thing, that I would uh, comment is that there's a lot of young people, a lot of young people at this, which is very gratifying to see. And uh, some of them know about the fair tax, some of them don't. Um, of course, that's the same with the uh, the adults too. Um, I could say that the younger people are probably more open to it. Some of the uh, some of the adults apparently have been around the IRS too long, and they. They don't think uh, we're ever going to get this fair tax passed because they just think that the IRS and the income tax is part of their life. But, uh, you know, we're we are going to get it done. The, the younger people are more open minded, I would say. Uh, so it's been an interesting experience. But uh, we'll be back there tomorrow, um, probably start broadcasting about one o'clock. Uh, it was interesting today because Bob is com coming down with laryngitis and Right now, Elaine tells me she's not feeling too well, so it's going to be interesting tomorrow. But we'll be broadcasting live on Spreaker.com. You can go to Spreaker.com, search for Fair Tax Power Radio, and when we start broadcasting, there we are. Uh, and uh, we'll do. If, and we're hoping to get Governor Gary Johnson tomorrow. We've been uh, texting and emailing back and forth with his publicist. And we're hoping that he's going to show up for an interview tomorrow. So we'll be at it again tomorrow. Appreciate it. Great stuff. Thank you for sharing, Ron. Appreciate you and your team out there and uh, all the work you guys are doing. All right. Well, let's review our special topic. I, I love this. Um, you know, it's been, it's the kind of thing, what I've, what I observe is that the everyday citizen feels extremely disconnected from government. 
And, you know, in a way we want that, right? Like the government like can be like we want, I believe we want small government that supports creating opportunities for the, for the people and for businesses. Um, however, we have gotten very, very far away from holding our uh, political representatives feet to the fire and having them remember that they work for us. Like we elect them and they work on behalf of us to represent our interests. And man, has this thing gone sideways. So I really believe that meeting a congressperson face to face and looking them in the eye and 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 being a source of education for them um, and suggesting that like your support, your co-sponsorship, not just your co-sponsorship, but your lobbying hard for the fair tax is the number one thing that is important uh, to me and, you know, the fair tax supporters out there. And like, that's how you can count on mine and our vote. So with that said, a, a couple uh, great fair tax supporters have met their congressperson and we thought it would be interesting to share, you know, at a really high level, really efficiently what their experience was. So uh, the intel that I'll share comes from my former partner in crime, uh, Larry Walters, which many of you know, many of you heard on former uh, webinars, and Larry met uh, Congressman John Micah, who is in our region of Florida, and then another one of our supporters, Jade Wally, he is out in Colorado. Um, he met with his congressperson as well. And they both had a similar experience. And, you know, depending on the person, uh, Jade got had it happen sooner. But but here's like the process. So the first thing that they did was just call the local office and request the meeting. And what they found was that, you know, kind of like, a, <laughs> you know, kind of like an insurance company that will send you to as many prompts as possible before actually you know, really receiving you and um, like having to put a warm body with you. Like they want to, you know, hopefully you just go away. It's really the experience that they had. So they were redirected to the congressperson's office up in Washington. And they found their way to the person, like there is a key person on the congressperson's team that schedules their appointment. And this is the person you've got to get to. And in order to do that, you've got to be consistent. So it's like emailing consistently. And then when the response is slow, it's emailing again. It's phone call and voicemail after voicemail. And like, look, bottom line is if you don't go away, at some point they will respond. And that was the experience of uh, Larry and Jade. And it's really important to have be clear in your message about the purpose of your meeting. So, yeah, I want to talk about tax reform. And um, I, you know, I recognize what your position is. And I support the fair tax. And I want to speak with you about it in a way that would have you know what the benefits are beyond what you think you might know and um, see how it can really support your agenda, right? Because it's like, what's in it for them? And you got to take that angle. So really clear message. And then look, this is interesting. So finally, with the, cons with the persistence, uh, the scheduler got back to Larry and said, Okay, Mr. Walters, um, we will set you up with a phone call with Mr. Micah, and Larry declined it. And it really threw them for a loop. Like, what do you mean you're declining a meeting, you know, a phone call? It's like, no, like face to face. Really powerful. So with persistence after that, um, made it work. So... This is uh, just a process that both Larry and Jade went through, and 
um, you know, we really encourage this because it's like the it's it's like one of the ultimate forms of action here. It's like such a demonstration of commitment. And here's the cool thing. Larry <clears throat> said, so John Micah at the time when he was in office, he's not in anymore, was a co-sponsor several years of the, <clears throat> of the legislation. And Larry said straightforwardly, you are not doing enough. And it's really interesting. Uh, it got really heated between them. But Larry did his job. He held Micah's feet to the fire. <clears throat> and and in the end, he you know did it respectfully. And in the end, um, it was respected to the point where uh, Larry got friendly with his staff and ended up having regular meetings with Congressman Micah face to face. So, look, you never know what can happen, and uh, that kind of commitment can make a real difference in this effort. All right, <clears throat> so we want to take a moment here and invite you to really consider what you've heard. We're going to get to any more questions that we have uh, in a second. We'll have time for those, and I'm actually looking at the question board. There's a couple of comments. But there aren't any questions, so we've done we've done good so far. So, <clears throat> for those of you, especially that are new on the line and looking at this for the first time, we re we request that like this isn't something that you plug into and then you go away. No, we, what we want you to do is consider: Does this make sense? Does it make sense for you or your family, for the country, based on what we presented? And then you know, go do more research if you like. But get to a decision where this like aligns for you or it makes sense for you and for our country. And if it does, be in action. Don't let it die here. So here's some things you could do. <clears throat> so number one, go to the website popbox.com, create a free account. And what Popbox is, is it is an aggregate of all of the current legislation in Congress and it allows people, citizens, you and I to go in and thumbs up, thumbs down, support it, not support it and leave a comment why. And if enough people do that for certain pieces of legislation, our congressmen and women, they take note of that. So that's a, that's a really useful site. And then we talked about this, write email, phone and visit your congressperson. And then make a contribution. So join the 1040 Club. And the 1040 Club is where you contribute $10.40 a month to AFFT, Americans for Fair Taxation, and you support us. Now, like, look, to, to say it real plainly here, yeah, we're asking you to contribute with your time and with your wallet. And not a whole lot, $10.40. So go do the work, do the research, see if this aligns for you, if it makes sense, get involved <clears throat> and put your money where your mouth is if you believe that what we shared here tonight can make a real difference for our country. And it's real simple. Go to fairtax.org. It's a brilliant resource. Uh, go to the end where it says donate, <clears throat> drop down to the join the 1040 club, put in your credit card, cancel any time. $10 and 40 cents a month. Like just do it. We need it. You know, if we had a thousand people do that and we had another 10 grand come in every month, my gosh, like what we can do with that is, is like a lot. So, um, that's it people. That's what we're, that's what we're about. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I want to actually launch something here, a poll, that given what you've heard here tonight, uh, we'd like to ask you if you are willing and can be counted on to join the 1040 Club tonight. And if you're already a 1040 Club member, click yes. So, yeah, just... See for yourself like how it's going 
you know, what you think about this and, you know, see if you're willing to take a stand and, you know, make a commitment to something. It's a couple of Starbucks a month. And we'll close it out in three, two, one. Okay, great. Thank you. So that's great. So we've got some people I know are supporters, and we've got some of you that are saying you'll do it. So yeah, that's awesome. We appreciate that very much. All right. <clears throat> well, we seem to have facilitated a information-packed event because we don't have any additional questions. And um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to Ron, who... I uh, would like to say a few words, and then if there aren't any more questions, we'll close it out for tonight. So, Ron, go ahead. I got you unmuted. I was just going to add, uh, in contacting their congressman, you don't have to be an expert on the fair tax, but it sure helps to be passionate. And if they ask a question you can't answer, don't answer it. But you can get the answer to that because there's a lot of experts both in, probably within your state organization at the national organization. So um, don't try to make something up if you don't know about it. You know, I'm a retired chemistry teacher. What do I know about taxes except what I do, you know, each year? So um, you don't have to be an expert, but it helps to be, as, as uh, Mark was saying, persistent and passionate. And, and that was my only comment. Thanks. It's <clears throat> great, Ron. Great thought. You know, like, look, uh, remember, they work for us, guys. And if we're going to hold their feet to the fire and get something really meaningful done, it is up to us. So, look, thank you for being here tonight. We honor you for taking time out of your evening to be with us. Thank you for those of you who come back again and again and again. We, we honor you. We respect you. And I thank you for your efforts and I appreciate the new people being with us tonight. And, look, for those of you who are new, yeah, it's a simple request. Do the work. See if this aligns for you, if it'll make a difference for you and your family and your community and our country based on what you heard. Do more research if you like. And then if it aligns, support us. All right. See everybody back the fourth Thursday of March. Have a great night, everybody.